Hi, I'm Ashley. And this is Crafty with Ashy. Today, I am showing you just kind of a time-lapsed process of me painting a watercolor coloring page that I was able to create for myself. And so um, this significantly kind of decreases the stress that might be associated with doing any sort of painting, watercolor, any painting really, um, because the sketch is already there for you. Uh, it doesn't require any drawing or, you know, getting accurate proportions or anything like that. So it's almost like just doing a coloring book, but with watercolor painting. And um, you can still create all of the awesome effects of watercolor. So you can see here, I'm just doing a wet on wet sky. I did wet up the background completely for the sky and I'm just dropping in some cobalt blue and very loosely getting a very light wash in for the sky. And then just lifting out some clouds with a damp brush and um, kind of blending it out. And you saw I did it with the paper towel as well. And then just getting in a little bit of variation down toward the bottom to kind of look like maybe we're just kind of getting close to sunset here. So adding in just a touch of yellow and pink into the sky just to kind of get that very soft transition. Um, it's definitely not obvious or like bold because that's not the focal point of this painting. So just gently blending that out and lifting up where there's too much water with the paper towel. And you can see making sure I don't forget the little areas in between the kind of window area of this church ruins. And then going in and kind of bringing that yellow that I had in the sky down into the grass and transitioning it softly toward green. And so here I just took a different brush. This one doesn't hold as much water. And so I can use a damp brush to lift out some of those cloud shapes. Now I'm just mixing up some colors to paint the church itself. So this is a ruined stone church in Ireland. And I'm just mixing up some soft kind of grays on the warmer and the cooler end. So some brown, some Payne's gray, um, just to get some different shades. And just going in with an extremely light wash of that gray first over pretty much the whole thing. And then this will allow me to kind of have that kind of base color of gray and then do some wet on wet for some of the variations in colors. So. And see, I'm just loosening up these colors and again, um, making sure that there's just some variety there with both the color and the value. So um, just going in with now some darker colors, looking at where there would be shadows on the church to try to create depth. So again, with the drawing already here, right, it's basically a coloring book page. I have the proportions and the perspective done for me. It's already accurate. So I just need to go in and create the depth with the shadow colors. And this makes it kind of fun and relaxing to just kind of paint by numbers, but not really because it's still watercolor painting and it still bleeds and moves and um, flows really nicely. So just kind of paying attention to where the shadows would be on this building. So the left side of those columns are more shadowed than the right side. So that helps bring out that area and make it kind of pop off the page and become 3D. So as I go, I just keep creating more and more depth, basically. Um, and so you can kind of just watch as that happens and kind of see the image kind of start to pop off the page a little bit. I keep saying kind of, I don't know why.
So typically in watercolor, we work from light to dark. And you did see, you know, I put in that light wash of gray first, but I did decide to go in with some of these stronger um, shadow details before continuing to build up the color on the rest of the church. Um, and this, you can do it either way, really. If you do the details first, just know that if you're going to go over with another wash, you want to be a little bit careful with um, not running the paintbrush over it too many times or scrubbing or anything because that will um, kind of soften and eventually blend out those details completely. But if you are just going to go in with like glazing where you just very, very lightly run the brush over once, then it will be okay and not wash out all those details. And so here I'm just adding in now some dry brushing basically to get some texture. So with the coloring page already done, there's a lot of kind of drawn in texture with the stones. Um, and instead of trying to paint those individual stones, which would be tedious and boring and not relaxing and fun, which was what I was going for, I just used a dry brush technique over those sections. And that uses the texture that's on the paper and kind of creates variation in the, the paint by picking up that texture. So dry brush technique is great for stone and for like grassy textures and foliage as well because it just naturally creates that texture and you don't really have to work at it and it makes it very organic so that, um, you know, it just, it doesn't look forced or, um, repetitive either. So sometimes our brains, we kind of start adding texture and we do the same strokes over and over and then it doesn't look natural because it's too repeated, um, which works for some things like brick that is a repeated pattern. But for this kind of random stonework or random like foliage, if you're doing trees, it, it doesn't look as natural and organic. So again, now I'm just building up those shadowed areas um, going much darker now on those areas that I have some of the dry brushing in for that texture. Now I can see how much contrast there is going to be between the darker areas and the, the building, which I guess is another proponent for why you should kind of do the lighter washes first to build up the contrast, but I didn't mind going back over it after. And sometimes getting your very darkest piece in here. So you can see I'm doing the inside of this um, building, which is just completely shadowed. It actually helps show you how dark your mids, your mid values should be. So, you know, we have our light values and our dark values, and then there's all the values in between that. And by getting some of the darkest values in, it's easier to tell kind of where those mid values should land. So there are proponents for doing it either way. Just know that if you're going to work with darker colors first, then um, you can't go over it later and you're not going to be able to change those areas as easily. And so this um, picture, basically, that I'm painting here, I took this photo when I was in Ireland. And so I do have my reference photo that I'm using um, to determine kind of the, the shadows and the colors here. And so the inside of the church that you can see through the archway there um, was probably the most complicated part because you couldn't see the definition between kind of the sections of color um, on the coloring page very well, but I just kind of use the reference photo there to determine where the darkest shadows should be and where the light was hitting on the inside there, which is a little bit more complicated because if you don't know the building, you know, 
and how there's windows down the side that's allowing light to come in and all that, it would be hard to just understand those shadows without seeing the photo. So now just building up that archway and getting in the darks of the archway, those are more shadowed because they're kind of inset for each layer. So that's why that area is darker. And by creating those lines in that shadow, you can tell that there's depth there. So then just wetting up the area again, doing a little bit more dry brushing just to um, add a little more texture to the church. I just wanted it to be a little bit darker and have a little more texture. And then again, just kind of deepening some of those shadow areas because as watercolor paint dries, it does lighten. And so sometimes, you know, layering is beneficial in watercolor painting to build up the shadows and create enough depth. Now you can go in with stronger colors at the beginning, but layering is, is definitely a technique that watercolor artists use significantly. And then just making sure that some of those areas that there wasn't very much shadow or contrast, like the very top there on those kind of cone pyramid parts, um, just adding that shadow to the left side really altered the appearance of that and created that depth. So then just going now back into the landscape area of this painting and adding in just a variety of greens and yellows and kind of darker greens with some blues mixed in just to create that kind of rolling hills landscape. And going in on the more distant areas with that lighter value um, and less detail because that's how our eye perceives things. Things that are closer have more detail and they're kind of a darker value. And as it goes into the distance, things kind of fade out and become less detailed. So when you're painting, it's really important to use that to your advantage to create that three-dimensional um, impression because we paint in two-dimensional space. So um, by using some of those tricks, it creates the impression of depth. So shadows and then changing the value and the detail as you go farther kind of back into your painting. So then now I'm painting just kind of the walkway area that leads up to the entrance of this church. And so it was still grass, but it was like trampled down grass versus long undisturbed grass, we'll put it that way. So creating what looks like kind of a path there with that darker green, but still using a variation of colors in that green. There's some browns, there's some blues, some yellows, um, just so that it doesn't look like just one flat, like AstroTurf <laughs> um, strip. So while that kind of dries and I let it have a minute to settle into the page, uh, just going back into the church itself and adding a little bit more depth to some of those shadows. Um, Cause again, as it dries, it fades out a little bit, especially if you're trying to go for like a true black. And so you can always use black paint and paints gray, which is what I'm using, but you could get um, like brush pens in black and do those very darkest shadows with brush pens and that won't fade out the same way that your watercolor paints will. Now I didn't do that here, but it's just an option to help create depth and shadow. Okay. So now that the green areas have had a chance to kind of settle in a little bit, I'm just adding more paint and kind of using upstrokes here on the longer parts to show that the grass is growing up taller. Um, and that creates that illusion of kind of a grassy effect. And this is kind of dry brush E 
but not all the way true dry brush texture here. But um, by getting that wash in first, I had some variation in colors and that creates some kind of shadows. And then I'm just going in and layering up darker and darker um, paints with that same kind of upstroke. And then on some areas using the tip of the brush to create just a little bit more detail, but for the most part, holding the brush more um, kind of horizontal and letting the bristles kind of separate as I do that upstroke to create texture. And then just minimally using the tip of the brush to create some smaller details in that. But by building up those layer by layer with starting with the lightest value and then going toward the darker value, you can see that where the paint, the darker paints are not laid down, you still have some of that lighter value shining through and it just creates a nice interesting um, illusion of detail that I didn't have to go in and actually paint every blade of grass. Um, so it's, you can, if you appreciate that kind of hyper-realistic painting style, you can go in and paint every detail, but it also can be very effective and beautiful to create the illusion of detail and allow the viewer to um, just extrapolate the information and kind of fill in the information that's missing. So here now I'm taking off this tape and I just used scotch tape and taped it down to this um, cardboard piece just to allow me to be able to move it around and just removing that tape. And I didn't do like a big border here, but just a little white border around the edge. Mostly I just taped it down to help prevent warping, not really for a border. And here is the finished product of the watercolor coloring page experiment. And I think it worked out really well. I hope you enjoyed watching this process. Have an awesome day. Thank you so much for watching.